good to have you join us today on Health Matters. Thank you so much for staying with us on Channels Television. I'm Yomi Otaibwe. Our focus on the program this week is on how to care for the two bean-shaped organs in the human body. These organs are located at the bottom of the rib cage on both sides of the spine. I'm talking about the kidneys. The kidneys help to filter waste products, excess water and other impurities from the blood. To tell us about how to keep the kidneys healthy and take care of any disease that could affect these important organs is a consultant nephrologist and transplant physician at the nephrology unit of the Department of Medicine, Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, Ikeja. Dr. Theophilus Umezudiki, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me today. Good to see you again. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, so let, let's, let, let me start by, you know, asking you to tell us more about the functions of this kidneys. Tell us more about the kidneys. Right, so the kidneys are about the size of your fist, if you make a fist, and uh, you have... Like this? Yes. So about the size of Both of them or one each, of them? Okay. Each is about that size. So they are positioned, just like you said, just below the rib cage, and uh, they are protected by strong muscles of the back to make sure that little injury or trauma doesn't hurt them. At the back? Yes, so okay. they are just in front of some muscles, so you can hardly get to them. Uh, trauma doesn't easily touch them. So God's put them there in a strategic place to make sure that they don't get easily injured. So that's where they are located. Some people, maybe less than 1% of the population, may just be born with one kidney. And the good thing is that even with that one kidney, people are able to lead a normal life. Why, why would that happen? Right, so it could be from... Nature or... It could you know. be from uh, inborn, what we call congenital anomaly. So some people may just have one kidney developing instead of two. So they are born like that and they lead a normal life. It's only when we do a scan that we'll discover that, oh, such people don't have more than one kidney. So if I don't even check, I may not know that I have oh, one yes. kidney. If you don't do a scan, you won't be able to find that out. But if you do a routine scan to find out about your kidneys and other internal organs, then the person may just find that they just have a kidney and they will live a normal life all along. It's only when that kidney becomes affected by some illness that they can then have some condition that they will present to the hospital to see us about. So the functions of the kidneys, like you rightly said, are to maintain body water. So as much water as one drinks, the bodies, the kidneys are able to filter them out and pee them out as urine. At the same time, the kidneys are able to ensure that the acid base balance of the body is maintained within a particular uh, range of pH of about 7.4. And that's, the regulated, that's regulated by the kidneys as well as other organs. All right, then when um, we take in some drugs or some toxins, the kidneys filter, filter them out. So quite a number of drugs are excreted by the kidneys. And that's why when people have kidney issues, there's a need to dose the drug appropriately so that they don't take one that will give side effects or cause some other bodily harms. Also, the kidneys are responsible for removing wastes. So there are some wastes that are generated by the body every day. And as you pass out urine, those wastes are also excreted. At the same time, the kidney acts as what we call an endocrine organ. So it produces some hormones that are called, one is erythropoietin that ensures that uh, the bone marrow produces uh, red blood cells. The other one is calcitriol to ensure that your bone health is kept in very good shape. At the same time, the kidneys also regulate some uh, elements like sodium, potassium, calcium, and ensure that all these are kept within the normal of what the body ex uh, works with. So when um, the kidneys are affected, almost every bodily organ system becomes affected. Mm. So the, the kidneys are doing a huge job in the body. And so um, let's talk about how to take care of them because that's about the focus of this. What do we need to do to take care of the kidneys? You mentioned something earlier about, you know, running a scan or doing a check to even know how many kidneys, you know, someone has and then be able to know how to take care of them. Let's, let's start from there. Okay, so to take care of the kidneys, we need to 
Well, simple things that we need to observe. Number one is to make sure that you don't take too much salt because heavy salt load or too much of salt will add to the load of the kidneys and also can increase the blood pressure. And blood pressure is one of the known factors that can uh, lead to kidney damage. And so we need to regulate the amount of salt we take. As much as possible, do your best to eat what uh, the food you have. And if there's a way you can cut back on the salt, it's better still. So that's one. Number two is to do exercise regularly. If you do exercise regularly, you're able to control your blood pressure. You're able to control your body weight. So that's one another way to uh, help the kidneys stay healthy. And then you also will have to make sure that you drink enough water. Water consumption cannot be overemphasized. So on the average, you're taking about two to three liters of water per day. And make sure that before you start drinking that much, you don't you have done some check to be sure that your kidneys yes, can so I handle I was going to say that because some people, uh, maybe it, it's when it gets to um, uh, a disease state that the water that an individual takes is regulated. Oh yes, so people who have stage 4 and stage 5 kidney disease, chronic kidney disease, we need to regulate the amount of water they take. Like you said earlier on and I alluded to that one of the functions of the kidneys is to control body water. Mm -hmm. If you take excess when the kidneys are functioning at below uh, 30 meals per minute or 15 meals per minute, then the body gets swollen up. And people will have swollen legs, swollen face, swollen abdomen. So we need to uh, encourage people before you start taking so much water, do a check to be sure that your kidneys can handle the volume of water you're consuming. Because for such people, you normally give them the amount of water they should take. All right. So uh, the other thing to do is exercise. Exercise is very good to make sure that one gets a good uh, health uh, in, the, in stays in shape. And then again, people should avoid smoking cigarettes, taking alcohol. Cigarettes particularly because they have a direct effect on the kidneys. Alcohol doesn't have a direct effect on the kidneys, but it can affect blood pressure, and blood pressure can then affect the kidneys. And then taking hard drugs. Okay, now people who do all forms of uh, indiscriminate uh, exposure to the opposite gender, that can also be a risk because people that have HIV, hepatitis B or hepatitis C, which are uh, infections that can be gotten either by blood transfusion or some other means, can be at risk of kidney problem. Then people also who have some conditions need to treat it adequately. So someone that has been diagnosed to have hypertension needs to be on drugs regularly. And that way, they prevent kidney failure and other organ failures, all right? And people also who have diabetes need to take their medications regularly. And that also reduces the exposure of the kidneys to the effect of long-standing diabetes. And people who have other health conditions like uh, sickle cell disease, we know that some of them can develop kidney failure. So they need to check their kidneys when they have these conditions. And like I mentioned earlier on, people who are on treatment for HIV, uh, a number or a percentage of them, 20 to 35 percent, can be affected by uh, kidney failure. So they need to take those medications as well as make sure they, take, they check their kidneys to be sure it's functioning well. If it's not functioning optimally, they may need to be referred to specialists who will see them and add on to some medications that will help prevent kidney failure in them. And of course, someone that is obese needs to lose weight because obesity has been related to what we call uh, obesity-related uh, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. Uh, and then <laughs> we break it down. Yeah, so it's like uh, obesity on its own has some adverse effects on the kidneys. So overweight and obesity should be treated should lose some weight, even if it's 5 or 10 kilograms, it's going to help you in the long run to keep your kidneys healthy. Then also people who have some conditions, like we, uh, we describe it as a, a connective tissue disorder, they need to be screened for kidney problem because such conditions can go ahead and affect the kidneys. Then I need to mention also that uh, pregnant women, some have been diagnosed with hypertension during their pregnancy. and. Some of them may not have a follow-up to be sure that this hypertension reverses to normal because within uh, three months after delivery, it tends to reverse normal for a number of them. But some may remain chronic hypertensives 
and they need to be on treatment. If they don't get treated for that, they may end up developing kidney failure later in life. But if so they, they are monitored, follow up on, yes. on um, hypertension in pregnancy. Yes, so. they need to be followed up to be sure that it normalizes. That is something that is related just to the to the pregnancy state. And if it persists three months after delivery, they need to be on treatment. Okay, so quite a number of so, things. So, to what is about. coming yeah. to my mind that which you know have heard before is about the abuse of um, over-the-counter drugs, particularly uh, paracetamol. It, can that affect the kidneys in any way? Well, paracetamol, there is a, a description of analgesic nephropathy in some parts of the world precisely Australia and New Zealand, where they have a combination of uh, acetaminophen, which is a form of paracetamol, and non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs. So a combination of uh, paracetamol with non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs puts the kidneys at great risk of damage. Oftentimes, it's a reversible damage that once you stop the drug, you, it can be reversed. But some people, the damage may not be reversible. So that's why you don't combine those two uh, the one that is safer is possibly paracetamol. It's safer to use that than to combine it with non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs. I'm talking about even taking that, you know, at the slightest headache. Or some people, you know, habitually just take um, those kind of analgesics just so they feel my body is um, overworked today and I just need to take it. And they take consistently every day. Yes, yeah, so uh, there's nothing wrong with taking paracetamol. Okay, but if it's becoming something that somebody uses every day, uh, I think the person should check with their health professionals to be sure that they don't have some other ailment because sometimes many of these illnesses start in a subtle manner, what we call asymptomatic state, and the person may not manifest overt symptoms. All right, and then if they keep using those medications thinking they are treating whatever they, they, they call as body pains, it may be something else. So they need to really check with their health professionals. If you are getting so uh, ill or getting too tired, they need to check. Like I mentioned earlier on, one of the things that the kidney does is that it produces erythropoietin. So someone becoming tired may be from reduction in their blood cells. And if they check and they discover that their blood cells are low, they have a low PCV or hemogram, then that needs to be evaluated to find out why that is low. And that may just be a harbinger or an early symptom or early sign of kidney failure in such people. I think one thing I've taken, like, you know, at least one of the things I've taken so far is having medical checks because it's very important for the pickup of some of these um, uh, conditions or diseases that uh, you, you've talked about. We'll take a quick break and um, when we come back we'll be talking more about how to care for the kidneys and it will be time for you to join us in the conversation. Keep this number 0808054233. We'll be back. Welcome back. You're watching Health Matters on Channels Television. Now we're talking about kidney care. I have with me in the studio a consultant nephrologist and transplant physician at the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital. Thank you for staying with us. Um, let's talk about, you know, the forms that kidney diseases can present with. Okay, so we can look at uh, kidney disease coming as people having what we call isolated proteinuria in which someone has protein in their urine. There are quite a number of things that can lead to that. You can have some people presenting with blood in their urine, a number of things resulting in that. You can have people presenting with infections. You can also have people having cysts in their kidneys. Then we'll then talk about acute kidney injury in which uh, somebody suffers kidney damage or kidney failure, which is easily reversible and then chronic kidney disease. So that's the acute kidney disease is easily reversible. Is that what you just said, Dan? Yes, so it's potentially reversible in okay. terms of early treatment and early intervention. If, that's, if, you know, it's diagnosed early. Oh, yes. So a typical case with someone that has a disease like cholera, if they present early enough and you start treating, they could have some form of acute kidney injury which with IV fluids, with antibiotics, it's reversible. If they present late, they present in a state of shock, 
and that means that there isn't enough blood flow to the kidneys anymore and they may need dialysis treatment at such a point. Now, at such points, if they even have dialysis treatment, there's potential that the kidneys will recover after dialysis and adequate fluid. All right, whereas in the case of chronic kidney disease, we have a situation that the kidneys irreversibly get damaged and it happens over months and years. And those people, no matter how much dialysis they do on the go, they don't recover. And so those are the people that will end up needing a kidney transplant because of the fact that those two kidneys have failed and they cannot uh, continue Function life properly. without being okay, let, dialysis. Okay, let's be joined by Michael from uh, Ikorudu. Thank you so much for being with us. Yeah. Good afternoon. Thank you for being with us. Can we have your comments or question? Can you hear me, please? Hello? Yes, we can. Okay. I've been trying to just see how the doctor did about the kidney. Any time I wake up in the morning, I feel something down of the chest by the right hand. Some people will take like two, three seconds before. I just, I just, I'm trying to know is there anything wrong with the kidney or something like that. So let, let me try and get this clearly. You have some pain okay. in one part of your body. Is that what you said? Yeah. Where is that? At the exactly? right hand, uh, at the chest, at the right part. Yes. Okay, I'm not sure this is, uh, but the doctor is here. Okay, so Thank I you, think Michael. Uh, many of such uh, feelings may just be things that they need to see their primary care physicians and it will be sorted out. If it's not sorted out by their primary care physicians, they can be referred to the appropriate specialist. Something around the chest may not be related to the kidneys. It may just be something on the right side. It may be something as a woman. There are a number of things. But let us see her doctor and let the doctor see her appropriately. Run the necessary examinations and tests. And if something related to the kidneys, the person will be referred to a nephrologist. So let's talk more about some of the signs we can see. I know there are early signs, there are mm -hmm. late signs. Mm -hmm. um, you've mentioned um, swellings in the leg. Would yeah. that be late signs or early signs? Those would be, that would be a late sign, although it could also be an early sign. Okay, If it's a, a what we call a nephrotic syndrome, which uh, somebody spills lots of protein in their urine, it's an early sign of uh, the fact that they are having kidney Problem. And those kidney problems, once they have the right diagnosis, they can be treated and they can be prevented from progressing to chronic kidney disease mm. where they would need dialysis. So it can be an early sign. In and it can the also be a late sign. We'll talk about the, uh, some of the signs uh, as we progress, but let's have Undu from Joss. Hello, Undu. Hello. Thank you Hi. for joining us. My sister, good morning. Good morning, Doc. Go ahead, please. I uh, enjoy this program, uh, I must confess. Um, let me appreciate uh, uh, this comprehensive information on how we should take care of our kidney. It's very, very important. It is uh, also on record that uh, um, kidney problem, kidney related problem, um, it's possible that we are not. Okay, that I think is why the, the, the element is at increase. Okay, so the line that is that breaking off somehow. Yeah. I'm just trying to piece together what you're saying. Yeah, the network is bad. Can you hear me? Oh. Hello? I'm not sure. Can you hear him very well? Hear. No. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, so if you can just put it uh, briefly so that uh, we can yes, yes, yes. maximize so I was the saying, time. I was saying that now that I will have a kidney related, I want to call on the federal government to at least establish kidney um, uh, hospitals across 36 states so that uh, some of those issues can be addressed because many people are going through this problem of kidney failure. So, and this sickness, the better for us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Nice Thank you. Thank you, Undu. So he's calling for more kidney centers. I know as a nephrologist, I don't know um, how 
what figures you have as to you know the burden of of kidney diseases in Nigeria. Okay, so community-based screening that has been done in different parts of the country, on the average, is between 11 to 15 percent of people having one form of early forms of chronic kidney disease or the other. 11 to 15 percent of yes. the entire population? Yes. Some places got as high as 20 percent, but most of the uh, parts of the six geopolitical zones that were screened had, uh, on the average, about 11 to 15 percent. Yeah. So uh, going forward, um, looking at the, the ways they present, so leg swelling can be an early form, it could also be a late form, okay? So many uh, times we talk about staging of chronic kidney disease. So when we stage it, uh, stages one and two, most times are asymptomatic. So people that fall into that category are those that maybe have some risk factors like hypertension and diabetes, and they don't have... Uh, so asymptomatic meaning there are no visible symptoms? Yes, there are no symptoms. So they may just have a little bit of high uh, blood pressure or elevated blood sugar. But when you check their serum creatinine, it's within normal. And then when you calculate what we call the estimated glomerular filtration rate, it's between 60 and 90. Okay, those are stages one and two. So from about the stage three, where the EGFR or the glomerular filtration rate drops, people can start having symptoms like waking up at night to go and urinate. It's not only kidney problem that causes people that. People do wake up at night to urinate. Yeah, so when they wake up up to three, four, five times, that's okay, not normal. So if you wake up now? once or twice, it could be normal. And of course, also removing the fact that some people drink water at bedtime and when they go to urinate at night, they still drink more water to see that they replenish what they've just passed out, which is not a good habit. So. I, I encourage my clients to do their drinking before 6, 7 p.m. and then go to bed. You're not likely to wake up to pee if you drink that early or okay. you stop drinking that early. So the other symptoms will be foamy for stage urine. Three. For stage three, they can have foamy urine, okay? Some may have blood in their urine. And at that stage also, people start having what we call easy they get easily fatigued, or when they sleep at night, they wake up because they can breathe well, mm -hmm. okay? So it grows on to stage four, five. Between stages four and five is when they are becoming more symptomatic. That's when people cannot eat. They have hiccups, they are vomiting, they are having uh, headaches, they're having leg swellings. That's where leg swelling comes in as a late presentation. Some cannot breathe well. They have to go on dialysis. If they don't go on dialysis, they may become uh, is, is an that, emergency. Is that yeah. the stage where they get uh, kidney transplant? And that's stage five. Okay. That's when people... Let, let, let's hear... Sorry, doctor. Let's quickly hear from Olai Emiha, who is calling us from Ilori. Oh, I think Olai, Olai Emi is gone. Okay, so um, at the stage for the transplant, is, is transplant what we do readily here in Nigeria? It's available. It's become more readily available compared to 10, 20 years ago not less than 10 centers are offering kidney transplants in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And it's something that is available and it's something that you need to be sure that that person needs to have it before they go on it. So that's uh, where a specialist comes in to be sure that this person has reached what we call end stage uh, kidney failure and needs to be on dialysis. And while on dialysis, they can get a donor that is suitable after you run the necessary tests, HLA and every other test, to be sure that this person will not have a rejection when he gives it's a kidney so to the recipient. Yeah. Thank you so much, Doctor. I wish we had more time, but, you know, um, uh, there's a lot that you've said today, and I think everyone will be able to pick one or two things from, from what we said. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Theophilus Umezu, DK uh, consultant, nephrologist, and transplant physician at the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for and having me. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you next week. <laughs>